Welcome in to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast, our Sunday series focusing on our spiritual path. Thomas Miller, thanks so much for joining us. If you're having coffee on Sunday morning listening to this, I'm glad to share the morning with you. Hopefully the birds are chirping and uh, it's going to be a good day where you are. I'm going to wrap up this little series with some final thoughts on broadly our spiritual integrity. And I know this is getting almost to the point where you could take this to an extreme, and that's not what we're trying to do. But all of these 300 and some odd podcasts that are on here have mostly come from stories of chapters and pages of my own life. Just figured if I told the stories and what I learned from it, then maybe that would help some of you. And from our Facebook group lately, we've had some folks who have really appreciated the work that we've been doing here. So thank you all. If you're not in our Facebook group, it's the Subconscious Mind Mastery and Fun Astrology podcast listeners. It's a private group. There is a link to it if you can't find it on Facebook. Uh, go to the funastrology.com website. There's an icon at the top for Facebook. Click on that. You'll get there. There are four questions, and the reason we ask them is because we want people who are on this path for this very reason of what came up this week, that people came in and have already been sharing about their journeys, and that's not just for everybody. But just as these other episodes have spawned from my own personal experience, so has this series, because as it unfolded over the last, what, four weeks, I guess now, that this has been, of that we've done, that, well, I was going through a very challenge to this area in my own life. Started when I went to a wonderful weekend event in the town nearby where I live, and they had this dance troupe from Mexico that was doing these ancient tribal, probably Mayan dances. And I thought, wow, interesting. So I looked up their culture and their history, and I think I know exactly what they were replicating. But while I was watching it, the thought came to me, mostly from my own background, my own religious background, would have spawned this thought, too, is, ooh, could that be of the devil? Poor devil gets blamed for a lot of stuff, doesn't he? <laughs> it's like, okay, I know there's spiritual darkness, but there's also spiritual buffoonery. Boy, you talk about dating myself, go way back to the 60s. Flip Wilson, remember him, those of you who have a few uh, notches on you? The devil made me do it. (laughs) He said, the devil made me do it. Well, the devil gets blamed for a lot of stuff. But it did cross my mind. And that's what started this inquiry is, wow. And then I started to just think of religious history. Yes, here is what is good that can become what is actually really, really bad. Very corrupt. I don't personally think, and you may disagree with this, and that's fine, but I do think that when you have something get corrupted like that, it's not by just pure human intervention. There's some non-physical stuff going on, in my opinion. So that led to thinking about our spiritual integrity. And it really fit together because as the entity side of this was being explored and pondered, I had something going on in my personal life that will stay personal, that brought all of this to light and brought it all to the surface, including, as I found out this week, some entities right here still left in my place. They showed up the other day. I'll tell you about that here in just a second. But they showed up the other day and I had to, uh, in, well, it or they, whatever, I just had to invite it out. So here I am. I'm kind of observing out of two eyes here. I'm watching this situation unfold that was affecting me personally. And then I was pondering and contemplating about the entities in general and how could they penetrate our spiritual path even unknowing and boy the answer is yes and what i observed is this is really really hard to do for ourselves i mean it is possible but we are looking into a closet that is very well protected in our lives My podcast partner on the old soul new soul astrology podcast robert glasscock has some very specific opinionated thoughts around this, that spirituality and religion as well are great hiding places for inefficiencies. We can surround a lot of stuff with God and make it sound really, really good, but we could just be fooling ourselves, but we've wrapped it up in such an illusion that we don't even know that we are fooling ourselves. And that was exactly what was going on in this situation. 
And I'm sorry I won't be able to share the details of this, but I can share the lessons. And that is one of them that really came to light. And that's packaged around this concept of spiritual arrogance. And this is something that I've been extra careful for myself in doing these podcasts. A long, long time ago, there's a pastor. Now his ministry is out of Dallas, but really it's a radio ministry that started back in the 1970s. Some of you know of him. His name is Chuck Swindoll. I heard him giving a message to some young pastors telling them some of the warning pitfalls of ministry. And one of them that he said, I'll never forget it, that you get to a point where you get arrogant about believing your own stuff. And what he was saying is, stay humble, stay before God, and don't get so big in your own mind that you believe your own stuff. But those of you who have been in religious institutions know that it's common to hear language like, God told me dot, dot, dot. Or I got a word from the Lord. There's a funny joke I remember from long time ago. In the Bible, it says, after Judas betrayed Jesus, he went out and hanged himself. The Bible also says, go thou and do likewise, and whatsoever you do, do quickly. <laughs> you can take it and make it anything you want, right? Anybody knows that if you and I sat down for a videotaped interview... A good editor could make you say, and I, if I led you into the right questions, that a good editor could make you say anything he wanted to or she wanted to by just cutting, snipping, trimming this and that. You can make it and twist it and get exactly something that is not anything of what was originally said. And we can do that in our spiritual walk. It is possible, and some people do it. What we have to do is shine the lens or the camera on our own selves. Or if we have a trusted friend who is willing to call you out on your stuff, that's even better. But you got to cross that bridge of spiritual arrogance and make sure that you're listening to what they're trying to tell you. Somebody came along here and said, Thomas, I have observed or we have observed or a group of us have been talking about this and we wanted to bring this to your attention, dot, dot, dot. If I, all of a sudden, protected and sheltered myself and defended myself, that's exactly the opposite of a proper response. It's at that point that you really need to sit down and listen and find out and discover what it is that they are seeing and hearing and want to share in a positive way. So that's one, one big one, spiritual arrogance. Make sure you're not believing your own stuff. Make sure your walk and your talk match. We're going to go deeper on that point in just a second. But the next one I wanted to cover was just touching on the entities again. We've talked a lot about this. But this week, two times <laughs> around here, uh, what was it, banging, clanging after I turned the lights out to go to sleep, and absolutely nothing had moved, nothing was there. Uh, and then the second one was I had just whisked up some eggs in a little bowl, and uh, the bowl was on a towel, towel drying on the counter, I was on the opposite side of the counter, probably a good six feet away from it. All of a sudden, the bowl ends up on the floor. I'm like, okay, I get this. Residual energies, residual entities from this situation. So I didn't act on it right away. This thing doesn't bother me. I mean, I had a big one. I think I've told the story in the podcast before. I don't know. Somebody's going to get on Apple here and, and uh, rip me apart as some kind of a conspiracy theorist on this. But I've had exposure to this in the past, and you just clear it. I had a very prominent person try to come hang out with me in downtown Dallas, and I just said, eh, no, go down here. And I gave an alternate suggestion, and that's what I did here. In fact, what I did here, I wanted, I was curious why they lingered. Why did they stick around? Why didn't they leave with the guests? Was there some reason? Was there a message that I needed to hear? Was there something that they had for me other than throwing my kitchen utensils around? <laughs> I mean, there wasn't anything there. Nothing came up to me. I didn't hear or feel anything in my spirit. So, okay. So then what I did is offered an alternative suggestion of a place that's about 30 miles away that I thought would be a cool place for them to hang out or it, whatever it was, single, double, triple, whatever. I just was like, okay, Go here, and I think this is a matching energy, and it's a lot more fun than me. I'm pretty boring, so it's like 
Just go over there. There's a lot of excitement, and you can feed off of that energy. I'm not going to be good energetic food for you. Well, all that stuff stopped. And by the way, Fred's book, Clearing Entities, is for this year, year to date, and it was released this year, is now the third top-selling audiobook next to Parallel Universes of Self number one, Levels of Energy number two, Clearing Entities number three. So clearly, you all are interested in this topic. And if you haven't picked up that audiobook, it does help me. I do receive commissions from that, so I would appreciate it. And it's a great book, and it's a short listen, too. But that's the other thing. I have become super sensitive to this now, that through, and I think it might have been through spiritual practices, that these little critters came around. You know, Fred talks about this a lot. Whenever you have external anything, like you are whole and complete in and of yourself, so anything outside of that that you bring in to stimulate, to inquire from, these can be areas of entry. So I'm just saying, watch out, shore up, make sure that your practice is pure. And how would you suspect maybe it wasn't? Well, I think it's drama, trauma, unexpectedly bad things happening in your life, etc. I think that is entity-related. I've talked about I spent eight months in St. Augustine, Florida. It's a town that is known to have a long, multi-hundreds of years of history and a lot of spirits. They do all the spirit tours and everything downtown. But boy, was I ever met at the door when I came in. I have never had a series of negative things happen to me uninvited over a consistent period of time like that. I could not shake it until the day I left, and then it stopped. See, that was nothing I did to attract that except put my feet on certain soil. And for some reason, I was flagged and tagged and basically run out of town. And I know we have listeners in St. Augustine. This isn't about you, and this is not about St. Augustine. Thousands, millions of people visit there probably every year. And this was about me. This was about something that just didn't line up for me, and it, they, I was exposed somehow. I still don't know. St. Augustine is a wonderfully cool town and just beautiful architecture. Great Atlantic coast beaches, too. I'm glad I was there, but I was also glad to not be there because I just was not left alone. And the one time I've gone back, I got sick. And if you're still not convinced of this, before you write your review on Apple, <laughs> say this guy's a conspiracy theorist, he's blabbling a bunch of stuff about aliens. They did. Somebody did that a while back. Um, when you've observed something for a long time and you see patterns and you see connected things and you see certain things happen that are unexplainable here, and then they stop. And then when you talk to people who do see into the other side and you hear consistencies, then you realize <laughs> there's stuff beyond the vision of our own eyes. Okay, before we go into the meditation, I mentioned I had one other point, and that is don't be afraid to just tap the brakes, especially if you have some kind of public expression of your spiritual path. Like Chuck Swindoll said, don't get so full of your own stuff that it bubbles over. There's nothing wrong with taking sabbaticals. And even if you're just posting the normal, typical motivational stuff online, but if things are not in good order in your own life, then perhaps back off of the posting or the podcasts or whatever and get everything just shored up again and then come back. But then the walk and the talk align. Because, as we mentioned before, a lot of times we hide things inside our spiritual front. And I'll tell you, in all candor, I was very, very close to doing that for myself. But that clearing made the world of difference. And even G Fred writes about this uh, in some of his books, in fact, in Clearing Entities, that Jesus' ministry that we see recorded in the New Testament, the Gospels, was basically one of two things, healing people from illnesses and casting out entities. And I truly do feel the lightness that is described in many of those stories after Jesus cast out spirits. And I always wondered, where did that go? When did that stop? <laughs> it didn't. I've been obsessed of late by the music of Neil Diamond. He, is, he has Parkinson's. My dad had Parkinson's. I'm seeing this parallel. 
and I've just been looking back and listening and throwing some videos up while I'm doing something else. And I came across one this past week where he told the story, if you know his music, of Brother Love's Traveling Salvation Show. <laughs> it's about a revival. And he breaks out into kind of mimicking the pastor, the revival preacher. Well, he told the story of that song. He went to a revival in Jackson, Mississippi in 1969. Now think about this. This is a Jewish boy from Brooklyn in Jackson, Mississippi in the late 60s. But he said that he was completely taken by the energy of this event. The singing, the people, the show, everything. And he felt himself drawn into it. I mean, this again, like I say, he had no connection to this spiritually, no faith connection here at all. But boy, I'll bet he was drawn into that southern music and the beat and the rhythm. But he said then as the music stopped and the focus of the show was to the minister, the preacher, and his message, he said he realized that there was a lot of emotional pain in that tent that was just seeking some kind of salve, some kind of ointment. And he could see with his non-attached eyes that that was a lot about what was going on there. thought that was very interesting. Hiding things inside our spiritual practice. It happens everywhere. That's why I'm saying is, is there's nothing wrong with us looking at it because it is in so many places and so many ways. It's there. Just look at yourself honestly. I'm not going to do the music today because I think this is more of just a journal. Maybe you have some headphones and you can put some good music on that you enjoy. But this is more of a journal, pen, coffee, headphones kind of exercise. You either have to lead yourself into this or call up a buddy or a friend, one of your BFFs, <laughs> and have them walk through it with you. Say, would you give me a little bit of time? I'd like you to help me with something unusual here. And I think that's best done without my interference. And it's something that you certainly can just start with by looking at things in and of yourself. Like, where are things out of commission, out of joint, out of alignment? That would be a good place to start. Clear the space and ask for insight and wisdom. And do it from a perspective of, I really want to be on my purest highest timeline. <laughs> There's a new word. Sarah will have to work that into some of the uh, stuff that we're creating for our little shop. Purest, highest timeline. <laughs> All right. Now, if you've been following this series real time on Sunday, it's going to take next Sunday off. It is a holiday in the United States. Then we'll be back in September with more. Thank you so much for listening. I love you. We'll move on from this to other stuff in two weeks. I'm Thomas Miller. Enjoy the journey.